Hi guys! This week's video is going to be a user request because I've had a viewer who's really eager to see how to paint World War II Russians and I haven't really done much with that. I did do sort of a uh, sort of a sniper, infiltrator type guy sometime back, but he was in kind of a strange position and I was personally not super happy with the paint job, so I think it's probably high time that I revisit that and I'm going to be doing a basic infantryman for you this time because, you know, if you're doing World War II armies, that's kind of a fundamental unit and it's good to know how to paint. <clears throat> So, I've got some miniatures from Crusader, and I grabbed one of those. Uh, you can see it's a sort of nice, chunky, built figure, which is one reason I like Crusader figures. As I have probably mentioned to you in the past, you see he's very basic in his uniform and equipment, and he's got kind of a machine gun type of thing there that he's dealing with. So, this video shouldn't be too long. Uh, painting these guys is not going to be too complicated. They're wearing very, they wear very simple uniforms, as you probably know, uh, sort of more simple brown to khaki colors, and they're not carrying very much equipment. So with a little luck and a little practice, you can probably get these guys uh, done pretty quickly and ready to go in your army. So let's go ahead and get started. So obviously your first step here is going to be to base coat the uniform, and you've got some choice here when it comes to color. I, you know, I looked at some references to get an idea, and I noticed that the shade that they wore, it varied quite a bit. You see sort of more reddish brown tinted uniforms, more greenish brown tinted ones. I don't know if that just was different production or, you know, fading or whatever, but it means that you've got some choice. I decided to opt myself for more of the reddish brown hued uniform because I just think that's a prettier color in general. So what I've got here is German camouflage medium brown and I've mixed in a bit of khaki into that and that does help give it a slightly more yellowish green tinge but it's not very much. It's pretty subtle here. Next I'm going to just apply an even all over wash of Agrax Earthshade just to kind of help darken down in the recesses and creases. My first highlight on the uniform once the wash is dry is going to basically be taking that uh, base color which I had already so that uh, medium camouflage brown with the khaki in it and I've just now added some Vallejo brown sand in that to lighten it up. I've also added a bit more khaki in and you want to do that each kind of highlight level that you make. You want to keep mixing in a bit of khaki just so you can maintain that sort of tone. So you can see I'm just now going to carefully apply this over all of the sort of higher highlight areas and you can see I'm just not putting it really down in the creases or folds or I'm kind of blending it out into those areas wherever possible just you know and just trying to get a nice even look and th this sort of crusader figure has a lot of really smooth kind of round edges and not too many folds or creases, nothing too sharp. So, you know, it's very important that you try to get a nice, smooth, even look. And I'm also trying to paint the uh, tops of the creases fairly precisely here, just because when you've got a simple uniform like this with not a lot else going on, doing, you know, careful, precise paint work on these sort of large open areas is really going to, you know, it's really going to show and it's going to make a big difference to the sort of overall quality of the finished figure. For my next highlight layer, I, I actually just started out with the brown sand in this case instead of the darker color and then I darkened it down slightly using the khaki again and a little bit of the uh, medium camouflage brown and I'm going to just start layering it again over a sort of the top of what I just applied. And Nothing too complicated here. We're just kind of going over sort of the same process, applying it in the same areas, but then just applying it a little bit less, uh, emphasizing more the higher highlight areas. You can see as you can see really clearly here when I paint these folds and creases that I always put these sort of brighter highlight colors along the tops of the folds and creases, and then sort of blend them downwards. And you know that if you do that, that always gives a fairly realistic lighting effect, at least assuming the light is sort of ambient and sort of coming from the top down. And as always, I'm keeping my paint nice and thin here so that I can, you know, get a nice smooth 
a coat and I can also build it up as I, if I feel like it. So I can apply one kind of fairly transparent layer and then I can go back in after that where I want and apply a different layer and get a sort of a stronger sort of extra uh, highlight without making additional colors. Now the final highlight on this uniform is just the color I already had, but I've lightened it now with some Iraqi sand. And again, of course, I've added a bit of khaki and to keep preserving that slightly greeny yellow cast. Some uniforms I might continue highlighting beyond this point. You actually could if you wanted to here. You can make this even higher contrast, doing a couple more layers, adding in more and more Iraqi sand. But I decided to stop here. I decided, first of all, I kind of liked how it looked. I was happy with it being subtle, but also I'm kind of just thinking from a more practical standpoint. I, I, this is a simple figure, and I think it should be simple to paint. And I just, you know, I didn't want to overdo it. So I'm basically trying to get sort of the minimum amount of like layering and highlighting to have a figure look kind of pleasing and nice without, you know, going overboard and kind of making it just so time consuming that it's not really, you're not really getting a lot better result for the amount of effort that you're putting in. Now I'm going to be working on sort of the leather um, sort of belts and straps and such that he's wearing. I am base coating all those areas with German camouflage black brown. And that's going to be, in this case, his suspenders kind of and his belt. All of those areas are going to get uh, a layer of that color applied to them. I'm then going to apply a fairly subtle all over highlight to the leathers areas of uh, chocolate brown. And at the same time, I'm going to use that chocolate brown to base coat both the stock of his PPSH here and also the uh, handle of his shovel that he's carrying. Those areas are going to be wood, but uh, I want that the base coat I often like to use for wood is the chocolate brown. Since I'm already working with it, it just makes sense to do that now as well. My next step is to sort of continue highlighting the leather areas, and I'm going to do that in three phases. So my first highlight is I'm going to take the chocolate brown, I'm going to mix a bit of brown sand into it, and I'm going to, that's going to be a fairly uh, sort of liberal highlight on the brown. It's going to get kind of applied everywhere except really down in the shadow kind of recess dividing areas where I'm going to leave those darker colors that I already applied. <clears throat> I'm then going to take some just pure brown sand, and use that as sort of a higher highlight. So I'm going to apply that more sparingly. I'm going to sort of focus on areas where lighter light is hitting. And with straps like this, for all intents and purposes, you're really just going to be painting kind of a very thin edge highlight sort of along the tops or sides of your straps, and that should be it. But you definitely just don't want to let that color get everywhere. You don't want it to get too light. The leather needs to clearly be dark, but just with some strategically placed light areas. And my final highlight on the leather then is to take the brown sand and mix in just a bit of Iraqi sand. And that makes it quite light. And those areas are really just going to be a question of really with straps at least really just dotting the color on very carefully sort of along the top surfaces or maybe areas where you really want there to be a lot of wear but it should just really be in very small concentrated areas and not too with not too much coverage of the whole you know area I'm then going to finish highlighting the wood separately. Uh, the highlights that I use for the wood is going to be first a mixture of the chocolate brown and some khaki. So we're going for kind of a more yellowish tinge to the wood. Um, wood can obviously come in a lot of other colors too, but I, I like this tone. And it's the one that I use sort of most commonly. So I'm going to apply that. Then I'm going to go back over it with a layer of pure khaki. And again, working from the edges and sort of feathering inwards. And then I'll finally finish that off by just mixing a little bit of Iraqi sand in to the khaki and applying that as an edge highlight. And again, blending sort of outwards towards the center of the wood pieces. Now I'm going to be uh, working on his canteen and his satchel. Now the canteen is also sort of a similar khaki color to his uniform really, but I wanted to make the color just slightly different just to keep things interesting. So I'm base coating it just with uh, pure khaki here. And then I'm going to mix a second color, which I'm going to use for two purposes. The, one, the first is to highlight the canteen. The second is as a base coat for his satchel. The satchels he, that are carried here, I mean, sometimes you see leather ones, but a lot of times they just carry kind of a canvas satchel, so kind of a light color. So the base coat I'm using here is a mixture of the khaki 
with a lot of Iraqi sand. You can see it's quite a bit lighter, so I'm just going to apply that as the overall base coat and then take a small amount of it, fairly thin, and use that kind of blended out as a highlight on the canteen. And I'm not going to highlight the canteen any more than that. I want to keep this simple. I am going to continue highlighting the bag, however, and my first highlight on that is going to just be some pure Iraqi sand here. I'm just going to apply that thinly and blend it out. You can see I'm trying to sort of emphasize any sort of edges or sort of folds and, a lot, and that sort of clasp on the front particularly is getting a lot of light. And his sort of shoulder strap, that's really just a question of applying the paint all the way along it, sort of except maybe at the bases where it sort of should get a little bit darker. I'm then going to continue that highlighting process by mixing some white into my Iraqi sand and just the same idea. I'm really just going to be emphasizing the edges of the uh, bag and sort of applying it as an edge highlight and sort of blending it out, but still trying to leave some nice sort of clear dark areas sort of towards the center of that uh, piece. Uh, you can stop there if you want. I ended up also just going back in with some pure white, and I kept it really thin, though, so it wouldn't get too bright, and using that to apply one really final, sharp, extreme highlight around the edges of the bag and the strap. But, uh, you know, on reflection, I don't think it's strictly necessary to do that, especially if you're trying to save some time. So, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Next, I'm going to be working on his boots and also base coating some other areas with black. So, of course, the boots obviously are black. So, yeah, this is just really just putting a careful black base coat on. But I'm going to take this opportunity also to base coat uh, the blade of his shovel and the metal parts of his gun. Uh, they're going to get a different treatment later on, but I figure since I'm working with the black, it's easier just to get a first layer on now. I'm now going to go back in and start highlighting the boots. My first layer here is, as always, with these sort of black leather things, going to be German gray. And it's going to be a pretty all over highlight. I'm really just trying to avoid putting it down in sort of any folds or creases or seams. But otherwise, that gray color should pretty much go everywhere. It, you know, the black was really there more just to define sort of clearly delineated different areas. I'm then going to highlight here by just lightening the German gray. Um, sometimes I use different colors for this, but if you're feeling lazy, you don't have to do that. I, in this case, I was, and so I just took some white and I just very subtly lightened the German gray, just a small amount. <clears throat> My experience has been with painting these leather shoes. It's kind of a painful lesson I've learned from time to time that really less is more here, and you don't want to go too high contrast. So. <clears throat> My first highlight is a fairly subtle step up, and then I'm just kind of start focusing just gradually more and more on areas where light is hitting. So sort of along any creases or folds, sort of along your sort of top edge, sort of the division between the uh, sort of the, the sole and the rest of the boot, and of course on the toes. Those kind of areas, they're heel too, of course. Those are all areas where you're going to want to focus the lighter paints, and you just want to sort of apply them there first, and then you can kind of blend it out. And then I just made another step, added a little bit more white, lightened that gray just a little bit more, and just repeating the process, but again, just focusing on increasingly small areas. <clears throat> and if I do apply more, I really blend it out quite a bit. And sometimes I've painted these boots in the past, and I've tried, gone to this real shiny approach, try to put like a really light, high highlight on there. And you can do that, but I find that I've actually kind of come to the conclusion it makes your boots nine times out of ten look unnecessarily shiny. So I really don't do that anymore. I, I really think I've come to the conclusion that just a subtle approach is better. So I'm just going to apply two or three highlight levels of fairly that are fairly subtle of this, uh, these lighter grays. And I'm, I'm also going to be doing it on the shovel blade too. You can see here just because it's, it is metal, but it's a small area and I, I don't want it to feel too shiny. Now I'm going to be working on the helmet. I am base coating it using black green here, which is not kind of in retrospect a particularly suitable color but the main thing is I just wanted a really dark green that had really good coverage which is why I chose it. Uh, the important thing is the highlighting. They had kind of a olivey drab looking um, 
colored helmet. So the color I'm applying here now is brown violet, which has, in my opinion, a strange name because it doesn't look either brown or violet. But anyway, I'm just gonna apply it fairly thin and kind of layer it on here. You can see and kind of gradually build it up. I'm trying to make sure I maintain a slight uh, sort of border or division line between sort of the flange on the helmet and the upper surface. I'm then going to go ahead and lighten my brown violet using a little bit of Iraqi sand and then I'm going to use that sort of to carefully highlight it. So I'm going to go around the rim first and then I'm going to apply that same color to the very top of the helmet and sort of blend it out going downwards. That can be kind of tricky on the, these sort of large smooth surfaces to do that well. So if you're having trouble with it, it may be because the color you chose is too light and too extreme and you should kind of just make a slightly more subtle tone that's less different from your base and apply that first and then if you need to get it brighter then you can always add lighter layers on top it'll make the whole blending process a lot easier now I'm just gonna finish off the metal areas and I'm doing that in my standard way I've taken German gray and I've mixed a little bit of Vallejo Air Gun Metal into that just to give it a metallic sheen. And I'm going to use that, you can see on the metal parts of the gun, just to sort of carefully emphasize the different areas. It's sort of working along the edges in most cases and sort of blending inwards. And on the shovel too, I sort of ran it along the edges of the different parts. And then if you need a little bit more metal kind of look, you can just go back in with some thin, pure gun metal and use that to emphasize areas of strong wear. As I've always said, especially with these modern guns, you want to keep that pure metal highlight pretty light and subtle because these, in this period, guns were this more the sort of dark metal look and not going to be really, really shiny. So if you get to go too overboard with that, then your, your gun is going to look unnatural. Okay, so here is our finished World War II Russian infantryman. I think this particular figure is actually supposed to be a sergeant or some other non-commissioned officer, but it doesn't really matter. The uniforms were all very, very similar to each other, unless you're talking about really high-ranking swords. Uh, as you probably noticed, this figure was really fast and easy to paint. It's a very simple uniform. The equipment is very, very minimal. And I think even if you try to paint these to a reasonably high standard, you could still pretty quickly churn out a good sized force. Despite how simple it was, I did enjoy painting him just because sometimes these simple basic figures just to do them quickly but still get nice results, it can give you a really satisfying feeling. At the same time though, I don't think I would probably want to paint tons of them. I think I would probably get bored. So I do hope you enjoyed this video as always. If you did, please like it, uh, subscribe, uh, do leave me your comments and you know what you thought. Share it with your friends if you think they would be interested. Uh, so that's all for now, and I will see you next time.